Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of In My Plant-Based Kitchen. This is episode 30, and I am Emma. I am a registered holistic nutritionist and a certified plant-based chef. And today is the day of the week. I invite you into my kitchen to talk about plant-based foods, plant-based nutrition, plant-based cooking, all things plant-based. And this week we are talking about heart health. This is part two of a series that I started last week. Um, we talked about high blood pressure or hypertension last week and how different foods can affect your blood pressure positively and negatively. And we made a delicious health, health heart heart healthy um, kale salad. So if you missed that, um, be sure to check that out. This week, we're going to talk about another biggie, cholesterol. Um, this is another big topic when it comes to heart health. So let's dive in. Elevated cholesterol levels, especially or specifically LDL, um, low density lipoprotein levels are thought to be one of the main causes of atherosclerosis, which is the buildup of plaque that leads to the hardening and narrowing of the arteries that can cause cardiovascular disease. Arte artery blockages begin when cholesterol particles irritate an artery wall, and if one of the accumulating blockages breaks open, it can trigger the formation of a clot. Um, if that blood clot occurs in a coronary artery, that can kill or damage a section of the heart muscle, um, which would also be known as a heart attack. So the main thing that increases our cholesterol levels is the consumption of saturated fat and to some extent dietary cholesterol as well when it comes to what we're eating. Um, both of these things are found mostly in animal foods. Trans fats, which are found in fried foods and in animal products in small amounts as well, are another type of fat that can, uh, can raise LDL cholesterol. So a healthy whole foods plant-based diet is free of cholesterol and saturated animal fats and has been shown to be successful in preventing and even reversing or treating heart disease, even in some severe cases. If this is an area that interests you, I will include some links to research in the show notes for further information. Um, this is, of course, a very complex topic, and I'm not trying to over oversimplify it or say that it's easy um, or simple to, um, to deal with cholesterol issues if you have them, but I do want to emphasize that what we can eat or what we eat can play a really, really important role in protecting our hearts and keeping our cardiovascular systems functioning the way we want them to and keep those cholesterol levels in check in many, many cases. So let's talk about some of the key reasons why a whole foods plant-based way of eating is so advantageous to when it comes to lowering cholesterol levels. As I already mentioned, a whole foods plant-based diet is free of dietary cholesterol because plant foods don't contain cholesterol. That's It's as simple as that, period. Um, cholesterol is actually a lipid or a fat that we need because it helps our bodies to make things like cell membranes, hormones, and vitamin D. For that reason, our livers make all the cholesterol that we need, and we don't need to take in any through our diet. So I also mentioned that saturated and trans fats can affect our cholesterol levels, and that's because saturated and trans fats cause our bodies to produce more cholesterol. For the most part, saturated fats are found in animal products and fried foods, so if you're steering clear of those foods, you're doing yourself a favor. However, it's also good to know that there are a few plant foods like coconut oil, palm oil, coconut products, um, and some tropical foods that are high in saturated fat as well, and they'll have the same effect in your body. So it's a good thing to be aware of that. But let's move on to some foods that you want to make sure you're including. Um, we've talked about lots of things to avoid. Let's talk about the things to include. One of the great benefits of a plant-based diet in terms of cholesterol is that um, it's high in fiber. Soluble fiber in particular found in many plant foods like oats, beans, fruits like apples and pears and berries, vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes help to lower cholesterol by binding to it in the small intestine and then leaving the body via the waste stream. This of course prevents cholesterol particles from entering your bloodstream and then traveling to other parts of the body to build up. So you want to include plenty of fiber-rich foods in your diet for so many reasons, not just heart health, of course, but this is definitely a good thing to keep your cholesterol levels in check, fiber, fiber, fiber. So how do you do that? 
Um, of course, one really great option is to choose whole grains over processed grains. So your brown rice instead of your white rice or your black rice or red rice, those, those rices that haven't been, had all the fiber removed from them. But also um, different kinds of, of grains. Quinoa is very high in fiber. Most grains are high in fiber. Um, bulgur, sorghum, barley. And when you're choosing those um, grains, choose the whole grain variety of them, the less processed um, version of them whenever you can. And whole grain breads uh, or whole grain products over white breads or white products um, are is an important um, switch to make as well. But a huge one is including more beans and legumes in your diet. Grains and beans in particular are your fiber superstars. Um, and soluble fiber is one of the, you know, is, is um, a huge part in, a, a huge component in beans, black beans, chickpeas, and so on. So make sure you're getting lots of hummus and bean spreads, edamame, put beans in your salads and your smoothies. I talked about in a smoothie video not long ago, um, uh, put them in your wraps, just get them in wherever you can, just a few at a time. And if over the course of the day, hopefully you'll get lots. And that's going to be uh, a great thing for you to do. Tofu, tempeh, all of those counts in, count in your legume family. So make sure you're just getting lots of those bean and legume foods into your diet on a daily basis. Nuts and seeds are also a great source of fiber and they're very nutrient rich, but they are, are of course also high in fat. So just um, make sure you include them and include a variety of them, but beware of the fact that they do have a higher fat content. Um, so watch the quantities of those rather eating them than eating them as snacks, eating them raw on salads and um, you know, as maybe a part of a dressing or something like that is a great idea. Um, a note that when you start replacing meat with beans in your diet, you're doing yourself a double service in terms of fiber in particular because meat has no fiber and beans are rich in it. So you're replacing a food that has no fiber at all and some really um, detrimental uh, impacts with something that has lots of great impacts and lots of fiber. So double, double pump. <laughs> um, the other uh, thing I wanted to do this week was share another heart healthy recipe. And this is one of my favorite breakfasts. I am actually going to make it um, tonight to go in the fridge for tomorrow morning. I will admit that often I make this recipe um, the, uh, I make this recipe the morning of, and I will just have it, um, you know, I'll just eat it, like I'll leave it on the counter to stew for uh, about half an hour and it also works. But if you um, are rushed for time in the morning, if you're pressed for time in the morning, or if you just like to be really super organized, you can make this ahead of time. And the longer it sits, the the you know more time it has to sort of gel up. And um, I'm sure that overnight oats is not going to be new to some of you. Um, this is actually a recipe that... I honestly don't remember how similar it is to the original recipe. I think it was from Cookie and Kate, a great blog, a great vegan blog. Um, and I just, I make it lots of different ways, but um, one of my favorite ways to make it is what I'm gonna share with you tonight. So um, this makes one serving. So if you want more than that, just double it. Or the other thing that you can do, and this is something that I share with a lot of the clients that I work with who are trying to um, get more organized and do more meal planning and batch cooking and that kind of thing is you can make, you know, three or four of these at a time and just leave the fruit off and then pull them out of the fridge as you go through the week. So what you're going to do is start with about a third of a cup of oats. If you're going to let this sit overnight, you could also use steel cut oats um, if you like. They are the less processed. These are rolled oats. So the more, so you've got your, your oat groats, which are the least processed, then your steel cut oats, a little bit more processed and cut down, then your rolled oats, and then your quick oats. So um, the, each stage of processing takes a little bit more out of the food. And, and um, so it's good if you, I, I really prefer rolled oats. I, I, um, 
like steel cut oats, but I'll cook them if I'm going to. But for, for this type of recipe, I really like the, the rolled oats, but you can use steel cut oats if you like. So we've got a third of a cup of those. Um, you want about a tablespoon or so of nut butter. And if you're um, looking to get more low fat in your diet, then you can leave the nut butter out. Um, you can use any kind of nut butter. I have peanut butter here, but um, so about a tablespoon or so, I usually eyeball this. Um, but you could use almond butter, cashew butter, any kind of nut or seed butter that you like. Oh, the chia seeds. So chia seeds, about a tablespoon as well. These are gonna give you your really nice, um, healthy essential fatty acids. You can, um, your omega-6, or sorry, omega-3s, and you can use the ground flaxseed as well. Um, the chia seeds also really help um, the this mixture to gel up and um, and come together overnight, but the flax will also do that. So sometimes, you know, you can even switch it out or if you don't love the texture of um, the chia seeds, you can either grind them or use flax instead. You're gonna want two tablespoons or two, two tablespoons, two um, thirds of a cup. So double the amount of oats to milk. So I've got an almond milk here. Any kind of plant-based milk is gonna be great. Just make sure it doesn't have added sugars and things like that. Mix it up. And actually I didn't, um, I don't have it right here, but usually I add a, a teaspoon of cinnamon too, which is also another um, helpful um, spice for blood pressure. So um, you can add, you know, a pinch of nutmeg or um, some allspice or something like that. So this is um, the basic recipe. And then you want to top it with a bunch of fruit. I will share a picture of my finished bowl um, with this video. I almost always have this with pears and frozen blueberries. So I will just dice up a pear, very rich in soluble fiber and uh, top it with blueberries, which are of course, antioxidant rich, um, anti-inflammatory, fiber rich foods, um, also great source of soluble fiber. So we've got the oats for soluble fiber, the pear, the blueberries. Um, so this is a very um, cholesterol lowering friendly diet um, recipe, I guess. Um, Anyway, so I will put this in the fridge like this. I usually use a smaller jar, but I couldn't find one. I'll just put it in the fridge like this. It's gonna firm up overnight and then I'll pour it into a bowl and top it with a bunch of um, chopped up pears and frozen blueberries. And it is a delicious, ready to go breakfast. This is one of my favorite traveling breakfasts because when I, when I uh, travel, I'll do exactly this and then I'll just fill the rest of the jar with fruit and away I go. And it, it it's such a, it's very satiating. It's got the, the healthy fats in it, um, the grain um, to help fill you up. It's got the all the fiber and the um, fruit to make you feel good. It's a great start to the day. So that's the heart healthy recipe I wanted to share with you today. Next week, we will have another topic to do with heart health and another recipe. Um, I hope you're enjoying this series. And if you... Um, if you want the recipe, please make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. Um, if you have a question that you, or a topic that you'd like to hear more about to do with plant-based eating and nutrition, be sure to let me know um, via the form or the links. Please give the video a like. It helps. Uh, I love it. It's really nice to get your feedback. I love hearing from you. Have a great week and I will see you next week.